a McLaren MP412C like this one could cost as much as $250,000 with options. A Ferrari 458 Italia could cost about the same. But today, the average asking price for a 2012 458 on Auto Trader is about $217,000, while an MP412C is only $143,000. And that makes the MP412C the ultimate exotic car deal. Or is it? Right now, I'm not really sure because I've never actually driven an MP412C in my entire life. So I've come all the way to Florida to drive this one, which was loaned to me by a viewer, so that I can figure out whether the MP412C really is today's great exotic car bargain. Now, for more of my thoughts on that, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. But before I do that, I'm going to take you and me on a little tour of the MP412C so that we can check out all of its little quirks and special features. But before I do that, a little more information. The MP412C came out for the 2012 model year as McLaren's first mainstream sports car after the famous McLaren F1 in the 1990s. It used a 616 horsepower twin-turbo V8. Compare that to 570 horsepower in the Ferrari 458 and a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic. Curb weight is 3,100 pounds, that's lighter than a Lamborghini Huracan. And the MP412C will do 0-60 to 60 in 3.2 seconds with a top speed of 204 miles per hour. We'll start with one thing I already know I don't like right off the bat, and that's its name. Ferrari has Berlinetta and Italia. Lamborghini has Huracan and Murcielago. This thing is named like a DVD player. But that doesn't really matter as long as it's cool. So, is it? One of the coolest things is just getting in. You'll notice on the outside that there's no door handle. Here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or anywhere, really. So, how do you get into this car? It turns out that you slide your hand under the door in just the right way, and it opens up for you. It's like a secret handshake known only to McLaren owners. And also, everybody who watches this video. Now, the doors open electronically from the inside, but if for whatever reason they fail to open, there is a manual door release right here. And it's just about the coolest looking manual door release I've ever seen. Now, a little bit less cool when it comes to the doors is actually getting inside. The doors open at an angle that makes it a little bit difficult to look graceful as you're trying to get inside this car, as I shall now demonstrate. <clears throat> And by the same token, getting out isn't exactly easy either. You pull up in this cool car and you pop open your doors and then... I don't really look all that cool. One more interesting door-related detail, there are two buttons on the driver's door. Number one is the button to open the hood and back, and number two is the button for tow mode. You have to put the car in tow mode before you tow it or else the alarm will go off because it'll think it's being stolen. Now when you get inside the car, the first quirk you'll notice is when you go to start it. And you look here for the ignition and that's not it. And then you look here and it isn't there either. Instead, it's a start stop button in the center control stack, which is kind of cool. But the strange thing is that the button located here where you'd expect the ignition to be is the mirror controls. Ah, the British. Inside, turn signal stalks are normally a rather boring affair, but not in this car. Check that out. That's kind of cool. And it's the same on the other side with the wiper stock. Another interesting thing you'll find when you get inside the car, and frankly something I think is kind of cool, is that there are no climate controls in the center control stack. Instead, McLaren has reserved the middle of the center control stack for these performance buttons. The climate controls are on the door. And the really crazy thing is that you control your driver's side on your driver's door, and then you control your passenger side on your passenger door. It would have been a lot cheaper for McLaren to just put one set of controls in the middle, but instead they went with the cool solution. Although one slightly uncool thing, apparently this screen is prone to breaking, and the owner of this car told me the replacement cost is $4,800. Now, while you might think that climate controls mounted on the door are gonna be kinda weird and hard to use, they're actually the simplest system I've ever encountered. Turn this dial and you get more air. Turn this dial and you change the temperature. And then press these buttons and you control exactly where the air comes out. Honestly, I wish this were so simple in every car. If you're trying to put something somewhere, you'll also quickly notice that there is no glove box. And the center console storage is pretty minimal. 
Although McLaren is probably the only exotic car company to provide a couple of cup holders and a little storage area under the center control stack. Uh, in the middle, the McLaren center screen seems kind of intimidating at first because it has five buttons, none of them are labeled with any words, and the middle one has sort of a weird design on it. It seems like one of those systems you have to get used to using, like a British car system would, but it's actually pretty simple. You just touch the buttons and the things show up that you'd expect. Now, obviously this system has everything you'd expect, navigation or radio, but the coolest thing about this system is that when the car is stopped, you can actually use it as a web browser. I'm serious. You can use your McLaren to browse the internet. Ah, what a world we're living in. Normally in my videos, I try to provide a fair, unbiased, reasonable. Now, like I mentioned before, the reason the climate controls aren't in the middle is because they've reserved that space for performance buttons instead. Apparently McLaren deems those to be more important. You have your engine start stop button. That's pretty cool. Performance, handling, launch control, and my personal favorite, winter mode. Now down at the base of the center console, we have the buttons for the transmission. We live in a brave new world where a McLaren can be shifted into gear with the small little push of a button. And here's another interesting quirk about the interior of this car. On the left side, you have a climate control vent. That's normal. On the right side, you have a climate control vent. That's normal, but in the middle, <laughs> There's only one climate control vent, prompting endless arguments between the driver and the passenger about who gets to be warm. There are two things I find especially interesting in the front of this car. Number one is that the front trunk is actually pretty large. You could use it for stuff if you wanted to. But number two is one of my favorite design features about this car. The little daytime running lights are in the shape of the McLaren logo. Okay, so the MP412C seems like it might be pretty cool, at least on paper and when you're exploring all of its cool features. But the most important question with a car like this is, how does it drive? And so, how does it drive? I'm really impressed with how quick and how smooth the transmission is. It's incredibly quick to upshift and downshift. It's kind of interesting because McLaren, you kind of think, well, you know, they're just like a little startup. Their, their transmission couldn't possibly be as good as Porsche's or whatever. But so far, it feels that good. It's just so fast and you don't feel it at all. Obviously, it's a dual clutch. All the dual clutches are like this, but I don't know. For some reason, I wasn't expecting that from McLaren. like about it is I'm already starting to sort of feel comfortable with it. Um, a lot of the really exotic stuff I drive, Lambos and Ferraris, I'm always kind of nervous. This one feels instantly very, very much uh, like I kind of know what I'm doing already. Very impressive around corners. Dead flat. God, I love this thing. I feel like this is one of those cars where where you're like, yeah, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, and then one day you <laughs> go into a train. Yeah, the gear changes are just instantaneous. They're wonderful. And this car is, what, five years old? And this is selling for like almost R8 V8 money. It's much faster than that. Boy, the transition is so quick. Dead flat around corners. This is an amazing road. Excellent, wow. That doesn't surprise me, but you don't buy one of these thinking that you're getting like, even a Porsche I think feels a little bit more comfortable. The visibility is excellent. It's kind of interesting. You don't feel like you're up high, higher than any other exotic, but you do see a lot uh, out all the windows. You even have a rear quarter window, which is unusual on a car like this. I'm gonna put it on here. Oh my God. Yeah, so when you put on the brakes from high speeds, the spoiler in back goes up and it completely blocks everything. I think it'll be visible on the camera. It's hilarious. You know, I made fun of these cars because they all kind of look the same and it's like McLaren. It's, it's the it's the startup company, like they'll never beat Ferrari or anything like that, but this car feels every bit as good as anything that you'd expect to come out of, of Italy. I love it. I'm especially impressed with this because for a first effort, it's very hard these days to make a first effort. Back in the 70s, like Lotus makes the Esprit and it's like everybody's just kind of gluing everything together. But this car, you have to be serious now if you want to make an exotic supercar. You're competing with some amazing cars and this one feels just as good as any of them. 
So that's the MP412C, which has gone from $250,000 to $150,000 in just a few short years. These things are rapidly approaching $100,000, and they're already an amazing bang for the buck where they're currently priced. But there's still one big question, and that's reliability. McLaren is British, and the British don't exactly have the best track record for dependability. Throw in the fact that this is McLaren's first mainstream car, and we're not really sure how dependable it'll be over the long term. If the MP412C stays reliable, it'll be an amazing value, but will it? That's the big question, and it begs another question. Is this the best value in the exotic car world? Well, that depends. Just how much of a risk taker are you? <laughs> There's the one we watched last night. <laughs> Did you like that one? Yeah. Oh, look at this one. That's when you were doing the Ford. <laughs> 